Hey everyone, today I want to look at our new template that we introduced with Hot Chocolate 13 and it's actually just one of them and more specifically I want to have a look at the concept that we are using there because we have a lot of simplifications for your configuration code now. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video and with that let's dive in. Okay, so here I have my folder where I have my typical YouTube examples and we're going to create a new one. Let's call it template and then dive into that and use the new hot chocolate templates. And for this, we will do the .NET new and with .NET 7, we now say install here. If you're on .NET 6, you would typically uh, do a dash dash install here. But since I have .NET 7, I'm doing the new command. And we are using preview 88 here. That's the first preview where we have the new template in. So when I have installed that, you can see we have a couple of templates and they're coming more before we release. We are using now the GraphQL template here. And that's the typical GraphQL server template for ASP.NET Core. And to use that, we do .NET new GraphQL. And then we can use VS Code to have a look at it. And uh, you can see it has a couple of uh, parts to it. Let me restore it. Okay, it's restored. So we have now a program CS here where our configuration is in. And we have a couple of types up here. Let's first have a look at the program CS. So the program CS is now very clean, not a lot to it. So we have this at GraphQL server and then add types. And add types is essentially done by our source generator. And we will inspect your whole type system for GraphQL related stuff. And then add build time, generate code. We will have a look at the code in a second. So the next thing is that we uh, set up here your transport so it works. Let's run that before we look at the types. So I'm doing a .NET watch. Let me go to the browser and then we go on the GraphQL route. And then we can create a new document here and have a look at the schema. And you can see we have a query here with a field book. It's a typical template that we had before. It's the same schema structure, essentially. And you can see you can drill into the author here. So let's have a look at how that actually works underneath. Here you can see we have the query type. If I go on it, you can see it's a standard GraphQL root type, but on top of it, it has this new query type attribute. And this query type attribute will register our type here with our GraphQL configuration. So essentially, we will now generate code that registers these types. There's one more aspect to that. You can see that first, this is a static type, and we now allow static types for things like that because the root type, for instance, is just a collection of resolvers, entry points, and it's GraphQL specific. That's why it's okay to have your attributes on it. We are not having GraphQL specific attributes on our business models. If we think of business models here, like the book, it's completely clean, there's nothing to it. So one other cool aspect here is you could have multiple query types that have different names. Maybe that is the book queries here. Let's call that like this, queries. It are the book queries. Maybe we have another class for our Hello World query. Okay, this is my Hello World query here. You can see it's not static in this case. And we also annotated it. And if I go here to Banana Cake Pop again, it already refreshed. So, and I could run this query. For instance, here the Hello query, let's run it. And overall, this is a very nice workflow. How I can work on my API, it automatically registers everything that is GraphQL related and then put that in here. And since we have these more semantic attributes now, we know that this is actually a query type. It's not just any type. So this is a query type and we're gonna write code that ensures that there is only one query type and these are merged and so on. So let's have a look at the code that is generated here. Let me get rid of the console here. Let's make that bigger. Okay, what you can see here is that we register up here the static class as a type extension. And down here we are registering the hello queries, which is not a static class as a generic, but also as a type extension. And then we have here um, a very complicated looking thing, but essentially we are configuring the schema and we try to add the root type. If there was another module that already registered the query root type, then these upper things here will just extend that. If not, we are providing an empty root type and these two guys extend that. 
And the nice thing is that this not just works with query, we could also just write a mutation here. Okay, this is our um, simple mutation type here, very simple, just uh, essentially is a query here. We are not doing really mutating something, but just to show you how easy it is and how easy it now is to develop, I just wrote this mutation type here. And still my configuration looks as simple as we started, but the generated code behind it got a lot more. Now we have two of these configures for mutation and query, and we also registered our mutation type here. So I have to do zero configuration now, and I can just dig into my GraphQL IDE here, and you can see it's already there. We already have the type. And I already have the field here. I can just run it. So I say mutation, run it, and I'm done. So the development cycle is here very nice with the .NET watch, no hot reload, and then the source generator triggering actually rebuild of my server, and then banana cake pop immediately refreshing the schema. So very nice cycle here. Okay, this is it. I hope this is one more feature in your hot chocolate 13 toolbox, which makes your life much easier. It's these details we are working about at the moment to refine the experience that we had with Her Chocolate 12 and reduce your code that you have to write even more and getting to smaller configurations that are easier to grasp. Please tell us in the comments what you think about the new type auto registration. If you like our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. This really helps our project to grow and include even more members into our community. With this, I'm out.